Hello everybody, I'm Sean Powers and today we are going to talk about text editors. And I know that sounds super boring, but if you've ever been on the Linux command line and gotten stuck inside the VI editor and had no idea how to get out of it, this video might save you some of your sanity in the future and it should also help prepare you for the Linux Plus certification, which is actually what this video is part of. And this entire course is partially possible because of those folks on Patreon who have decided to support me in what I do and make making these videos for you to prepare for certification and things like that. Specifically, I wanted to call out uh, a friend of mine, Tanya Klukas, who is a, a nerdy nerdling who nerds level supporter. And I haven't had an opportunity to call her out in a video. So thank you so much for supporting me. And it's because of people like Tanya that we're allowed to do these or that I have the time to do these videos. So if these help you at all, uh, thank you to my supporters because they make it possible. Now, like I said, this is part of the Linux Plus certification. Specifically, we're looking at section 1.2, uh, but I'm calling this 1.2.3 because it's the third video that I'm making as we cover uh, this objective. And specifically today, we're going to look at two, well, two and a half uh, editors. We're gonna look at Nano and we're gonna look at VI or Vim. Uh, VI and Vim are the same thing. One is just a little bit better than the other, uh, but I wanna talk about both of them. The first thing I want to do though is talk about Nano. I don't want to be accused of burying the lead. So here's the deal. You should use Nano, period. And if you have a good reason not to use Nano, well, then you should use VI or specifically Vim, V-I-M. Uh, but Nano is great. It's based on the Pico editor, which was part of a Pine email program uh, back a long time ago in the 90s. But that is a uh, that's not required knowledge. That's just because I'm old and, and have been around for a long time. But uh, Nano is uh, the GNU version of Pico. It's going to be available in pretty much every distribution out there. It's very user-friendly. It's very powerful. There's almost no reason to use VI uh, over Nano unless you're already used to VI, which is my case, which is why I use VI, or if for some reason Nano is not available. But for the most part, you're going to want to use Nano. That said, Linux Plus specifically mentions VI and Vim, so we are going to cover how to use it to edit files. We're not going to get into all the nitty gritty of either editor. I want to just show you how to be comfortable editing files on the command line without, you know, click and drag and stuff, you know, the word processor. Uh, but we're not going to get too into depth. The other very powerful, you can do all sorts of stuff, but you just need to be, be able to edit files. Now I'm here on our, our Linux command line. And if you look, I have two files. I have a bash script and I have a text file and we can just look at them using cat really quick. So you can see, okay, that's the text file. And the bash script is just a simple example bash script. Okay. So I'm gonna clear the screen. And the first thing I want to do is start uh, nano and we're going to open nano. If you give it a command, like the name of a file, if the file exists, it will open that file. If the file doesn't exist, it will create a file when you save, but it will create a file with that name. So in our case, we're going to say nano text file.txt and this opens up. Now, again, don't get intimidated because there aren't any places to click. It's a very easy and user-friendly editor uh, because to go around the file, you just use arrow keys. You can see the cursor is moving here. I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. Uh, when it starts up, it's immediately ready to edit. So we can say it contains text. Uh, and now it contains more text. <laughs> okay, so this is, you just edit the file however you want. Now there's a couple um, shortcuts that are very useful. Like I said, it is very powerful. It can do all sorts of things, uh, but specifically you're gonna probably wanna know how to like cut a line. And to do that, notice down here, this is like a cheat sheet of all the, the very common commands that you're going to use. The caret symbol here is telling you to use the control key. So you hold down control and then do the letter. So in this case here, uh, this means in order to cut this line, I'm going to hold down control and press K and it's gone. Okay, now it cuts it, and that is the same terminology that you would use in a word processor, because if you look right here, down at the bottom, uh, to paste it in another place, you just do control U. So I'm gonna do control, hold it down, press U, and there it is pasted it right 
there. Okay, so it's really easy to grab different lines. Usually what I do is I have to, if I have to delete a bunch of stuff, I'll hold down control and press, you know, K, K multiple times to cut out all of those lines, but you can uh, paste it other places too. So that's, that's really, really easy to do. Um, Something that's important, and this might come up depending on how you are connecting to the Linux machine that you're controlling. If for some reason the control key doesn't work, I've never had that happen in practice. But if you're on a terminal and it doesn't work, you can emulate the control key by pressing escape twice. I doubt that's going to be on the Linux Plus exam. And like I said, I've never once in all of my time using Linux ever run across a situation where I couldn't use the control key. But if you press, like, let's go up to this line. I press escape, escape, and then I press K. It's as if I held down control and pressed K. So escape, escape will kind of like trigger a control thing. And then you can press the next letter will be your command. All right. So... Uh, we're going to go up here. I'm going to, I'll, I'll do it that way again. Escape, escape U to paste it in. And now it's back. Okay. And then you edit it however you need. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool things like write a script in here. And I'll show you the script next. But in order to get out, you just look at the cheat sheet at the bottom here. Now, yes, there's control G if you want help on different commands you can do. But right down here, exit. Uh, the nice thing about exiting out of nano is it will prompt you to save okay so uh yes you can write you can save without exiting but generally what i do is i go Control x and it says do you want to save the work that we did and if you press y for yes it will then say what file name do you want to save to in our case it's text file.txt which is the file that we opened we could save it as something else by typing in a different name here and that would kind of be like save as I suppose, but I'm going to press enter. It's going to save the file and that's it. Now, another really nice thing about nano is let's look at that bash file. Uh, nano, what'd I call it? Oh, bash script. Okay. So I, for, I'm sorry, this, I just did tab complete. I hit tab twice and it showed me all the things in this uh, current directory. That's why I got that whole list of everything. But anyway, I couldn't remember the name of it. So uh, nano bash script.sh. And when we open this, You'll notice not only, you know, is it ready to edit, but notice how the coloring is all uh, set up for syntax highlighting. So it's easy to read all the commands in the script. This is really, really, really nice when you're writing code, because if you accidentally type something with the incorrect syntax, a lot of times you'll notice just because the color doesn't uh, format really well. And so this is a, a something that's built into Nano. It's really, really nice. And again, I mean, Nano is is just so user friendly. There's not a whole lot to show you other than like you could do control G if you want help and you can scroll through the, you know, the help command or whatever. And then look in the bottom. Now that we're in help, we have another um, cheat sheet down here, if you will. So control X is going to exit the help. And then we're back here. Uh, we can do control O, which is going to write the file without exiting. So I'm just going to say enter and it wrote, but we didn't exit. If we want to exit, we can do control X. And because there were no changes, uh, it didn't prompt me if I wanted to save the changes, it just exited right away. Okay. So that's nano. It really is that easy. There's not much more to show you. Now that's not quite the case with VI and Vim. Now, VI is kind of the old school editor, if you will. VI has been around forever. It's installed on everything. Generally, we want to use VIM, which it's funny that we usually say VI and we usually pronounce Vim when we refer to the different editors. I'm not sure why. Uh, but VIM or Vim stands for VI improved because it's better uh, in every way over VI, except maybe it has a slightly larger uh, installation footprint, but Vim is just better than VI. It's improved. Um, there are a few things that you need to know that they're different about. So um, the arrow keys work in both command and insert mode in Vim. Now I'm going to explain command and insert mode in just a minute, uh, but that's really, really convenient. And actually the biggest issue when I'm using uh, VI is I get frustrated because I like to use arrow keys. It's just easier for my brain. Um, Vim includes syntax highlighting. Uh, it sometimes has mouse interaction. Now I don't 
recommend you depend on that because I haven't found that's terribly consistent. Uh, but sometimes if you're in a terminal on a GUI desktop and you have Vim installed, you can actually do things like copy uh, a bunch of text with uh, the mouse, like drag over to highlight a bunch of text. I don't recommend that. It's just, it doesn't make much sense to me uh, to use a mouse with, with Vim, even if it has that feature. Uh, there are a lot of other features here. I'll move, I'm sorry, I'll make my face disappear so you can read it. There's a lot of other features, but those are really the most obvious. And while yes, the Linux Plus exam specifically mentions VI and Vim, it's important on a, on a regular day-to-day uh, -day basis as well, because Ubuntu Desktop has VI installed. It does not have Vim. So Vim is not installed by default on Ubuntu Desktop. Now, Ubuntu Server version, it does include Vim by default. And remember when I said that you should always use Nano unless you have a reason not to use Nano? Nano is installed on both of them, and it works just beautifully. And then at the very beginning of this video, I said, have you ever been stuck inside VI and you couldn't get out? Well, this is the magical way that you can use to get out of VI. Press escape and type colon WQ, and that will write whatever is in there and quit uh, the, the editor. It's not clear how to get out of VI. Now, VI or Vim is more complicated, and it's because there are two main modes. When you start VI, you are in command mode. And to add insult to injury, sometimes people call the modes different things. Like I've heard a, a mode called like VI mode or whatever. There's basically two modes. There's the command mode where you enter commands into VI or Vim, and then there is the edit mode where you actually edit the text by typing with your you know, fingers, okay? And so you have to go back and forth into the modes uh, in order to properly use VI. And that's why it's so confusing compared to something that just has a single mode like Nano, where you, you're always editing, and when you're done, you do control keys to get in and out and, and do stuff. So just know that when you enter VI, you're in command mode, which means you can't just start typing and editing the file. You have to go into edit mode in order to do that, or it's sometimes called insert mode or append mode if you, you know, append. But command mode and edit slash insert slash append mode. Those are the two modes and you really need to understand and know how to go back and forth. So I'm going to go right to Vim and show, well, VI first and show you. And um, I'll just show you the basics. So if you ever get stuck in using VI, you're not going to be intimidated. All right, so we're back here. I'm going to clear the screen. And now I have purposefully made sure that Vim is not installed on this computer yet. And I want to show you some of the frustrations that we have using VI. So let's open the text file. Okay, so we are inside command mode, and this is command mode in, in VI. This is not Vim, this is VI. And while we're in command mode, we can um, go around with the arrow keys. Okay, we can go like right arrow key, left arrow key, down, up, and that's great. Now there's also, if the arrow keys don't work for some reason, and sometimes depending on the terminal you're on, the, the arrow keys might not work at all, in which case you can use and this is going to be weird, but the H key is left, the L key is right, J is down, and K is up. So I'm going L, 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 H, 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 J, 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 K, K. And that is how you can go around in command mode using VI, okay? We cannot edit any of this text yet. If you want to edit the text, you have to press I or A, but generally I to get into insert mode. And when you're in insert mode, now we can start typing. Uh, we can say, but, uh, uh, and you can just start typing letters, press enter. But here's the problem in VI, when you're in insert mode, you cannot use the arrow keys because look, if I press the arrow key, it starts doing this weird like stuff, okay? That's not what you want in the middle of your text file. So if you have VI and not Vim, in order to go around to a different spot, you have to press escape to get out of insert mode, back into command mode, and then you can use the arrow keys to go around, okay? So VI is very annoying and I don't like it because I constantly end up with stuff like this where I try to use the arrow key when I'm in insert mode and it's just all screwed up. So 
What I'm going to do is get out of VI. I've shown you the, the frustrations with it. Um, and then we're going to install Vim and I'm going to show you how to use Vim uh, using or how to use VI and Vim using Vim because it's a lot easier, less frustrating. Okay. So we are in command mode now. And so to get out, do you remember the magic command I told you? It is colon, which starts some, pla some people call this VI mode, like a third mode or whatever. But when you press colon, now it's waiting for a command. And that command for me is going to be Q for quit. Now, I know that I said it's WQ, but I don't want to save the stuff that I put in here because this is just junk. So it's going to be Q, but it won't let me quit if there are changes. So in fact, I'll show you. So if I do Q, it'll say I can't because there are changes. So if I want to quit without saving, I have to do colon. Q exclamation point, and that will allow me to get out without saving and I'm out. Okay. So now we're going to install Vim and sudo app install Vim, just V I M. And like I said, this is already installed on Ubuntu server and honestly, most distributions just for some reason, Ubuntu desktop does not have Vim installed. Okay. And so it installed it. It did all of its stuff. I'm going to clear the screen and this is going to be a little bit confusing, but guess how I start vim i typed vi text file.txt you don't have to type vim you just type vi and if vim is installed it starts vim it's it's a little confusing because vi starts them both but vi and now we are in vim now it doesn't look a whole lot different but trust me it is a lot different we can use arrow keys the same way now we could still use hjkl if we want to do that but we don't ever have to because when we have vim we can press I to get into insert mode and look on the bottom. It actually shows us that we're in insert mode, which is very convenient to know. And now we can press enter and use the arrow keys to go up and down without weird stuff appearing. Uh, this is another line, Oop. another line. And I'm in insert mode. Let's say I wanted to save this. I could press escape. And now we are in command mode. It doesn't say command, but that's the mode we're in. And now in order to save it, I would do colon w and if i want to save without exiting i could just say okay colon w and press enter and it's written to that if i wanted to save as a different file i could do colon w new file.txt okay and so now it's saved to a file called new file.txt um let's see what else could we do uh I, I use vim for everything so uh there's a couple nice uh shortcuts to use and again since there's no cheat sheet on the bottom these are kind of things you just have to remember let's say we wanted to delete a line okay uh, we could go to the line using the arrow keys which is really nice now i'm in command mode so um if i type letters they're not going to appear on the screen but if i type dd it's going to get rid of that line uh let's say i just wanted to get that dd will delete the entire line let's say i wanted to delete one single word i could do d followed by w and it will delete a single word um i could do dl if i want to delete one letter dl 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 and then it's deleted one letter at a time dd to delete the entire thing i could insert more i could say you know new line and then press escape to get back into command mode you have to be in command mode when you want to exit. Okay. And this is where a lot of people get stuck. They're in a file and they say, or they're like started Vim. They're in here and they don't know how to get out. So what you do is you can press escape a couple times to make sure that you're in command mode or whatever. And then colon WQ is telling you, you're combining two commands. You're combining write, meaning I want to write the file and Q means, and then I want to quit the editor. Okay. So colon WQ enter. And it's done it. It's saved that file. And if we look, there it is, that new file that we saved. We changed its name while we were in there. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is that VI, if you have Vim installed, will also do um syntax highlighting. So same thing. It's the colors are slightly different. I think nano you like has variables in bright red for some reason, uh, but it still has syntax highlighting, which is very, very nice. Okay. And I guess that's really about all there is to it. Uh, so I started in command mode, so I'm still in command mode. I'm just going to do a uh, colon Q press enter. Since I didn't make any changes, I let me quit. And that's all there is to using VI. It, it's not as hard as you think, or as it, it's not as hard as it seems at first, but it can be frustrating, especially if you're not familiar with command mode and insert mode. So remember to get into command mode, press escape. 
Okay. It's okay to press escape. If you're in command mode, it's not going to like break it. You can press escape a couple times to make sure you're in command mode, uh, to get into insert or edit mode. You either press I for insert or a will actually append it like goes one character to the right and then starts writing. So insert or append modes are both ways that you can edit. And it's funny, just a true story to end with here. Uh, I've been using VI for over 20 years, uh, Vim specifically for most of that because it's just so much nicer to be able to use arrow keys. Uh, but it's funny because in my brain, whenever I'm done writing, I hit escape colon WQ. Muscle memory does that, right? And so it's funny if you look like when I've had a job where I had to make like word processor documents with Microsoft Word, a lot of times the bottom of my documents will have colon WQ because when I'm done typing, my brain automatically hits escape colon WQ and, <laughs> and then it ends up at the bottom of the document. So that's just something funny about me. But anyway, always use nano un unless you can't use nano, in which case use Vim unless Vim isn't installed and you don't have the permission to install Vim, in which case use VI and just get frustrated with the arrow keys <laughs> when you're in uh, edit mode. Uh, but apart from that, uh, use Nano all the time and none of them are difficult to use. Uh, remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, on the Discord, a bunch of people mentioned some tools to help you learn Vim or VI. And one of the, one of the great ways to do that is to head over to vimadventures.com. And this is a little game that you can play using the tool, the keys, like I said, HKJ or HJKL. Uh, you can actually use Vim uh key commands in order to go around to do this little adventure. It's just a fun way to learn the key bindings. Uh, but thanks again to everybody on the Discord who brought up things like that. Uh, so check that out. I'll put a link in the description to vimadventures.com. But it's just a fun little way to, to learn Vim.